Okay, now we've done the configuration of the SSWL600G. Now we'll go to the um, Netgear DGA34G to configure it to act as a repeater. And first thing you need to do is you need to let the Netgear to know the MAC address of the um, SSWL600G's uh, MAC address so that it, it knows uh, each other and it can communicate and it can repeat the signals. So what the first thing you need to do now is you go to the uh, advanced wireless settings on the left hand side from the home page. You click there, you check the box where it says enable wireless bridging and repeating. And then after that you select the radio button where it says the repeater with wireless client association. The local MAC address uh, field is already pre-populated within Netgear's um, MAC address. What you need to populate is the remote MAC address 1. You populate that using the uh, ASUS uh, MAC address. And now the second step, you go to the LAN IP setup. You don't want both the Netgear and the ASUS to act as the HTTP servers. You only want the main access point to do that, which in this case is the ASUS. So for the Netgear, I have disabled the capability uh, for it to be a DHCP server. And now we go to the last step, which is to align everything else. So you go to the, um, let me scroll up there on the left hand side, you go to the uh, wireless settings you align the uh, SSID, which in this case I've configured to be my username. Here we go. I put in that in the Netgear as well as in the Asus. Put in the same channel. You need to also put in the same mode, whether you're operating on the wireless G, B, and lately, you know, we have the N standard as well, but it's not available on my uh, hardware right now. And apart from that, you also need to align the security options. Um, uh, as a tip, if uh, the first time setting it up, it's, it's best to have the security options as disabled in both Netgear and Asus. Get it working, then you align it. In this example, I've already got it working, so the Asus on the WEP 128-bit, uh, as you may recall. And so I put in the same thing in the Netgear, WEP 128-bit. You scroll down a bit there. It shows the uh, authentication type, shared key, encryption strength, 128-bit. And now you put in the passphrase. Uh, from the previous example in the assets, I put an ABC, so do the same thing in the Netgear, an ABC, generate, and then at the bottom of the page, it'll show you the uh, pre-populated key. So, um, I forgot to mention uh, earlier that, please remember, both assets and the Netgear page, every time you make a change in a page, click save and apply. Make sure the, change, uh, the settings are all changed, and then once you've done everything, you restart both routers, and then make sure you apply the WEP uh, authentication password and settings to all of your wireless desktop and laptops. And then after that, you test, you, know, you ping the routers uh, from each of the uh, desktop or laptop at your home, uh, make sure they can see each other, make sure they can hit the internet. And once you've done that, um, th that's it. Uh, there's no more to it. And uh, just one last tip. Uh, if you have a laptop handy, it will be good to use it to configure the repeater because you can move the um, la laptop whatever you want um, following the repeater because whenever you um, you want to con configure these routers and modems, you need to connect them directly using Ethernet cable. You can't use wireless because uh, it doesn't know of your wireless client in the first place. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Uh, do post questions if you have any. And yep, thanks for watching.